don't panic. Okay, here we go. So you'll just see that I've just got different scenarios here. That's it. So our first scenario, and if I don't hear from any of y'all, I'll just answer it and say what I think. Some of these, I'm not, there's not like a hard and fast, yes, this is what you should do, no, this is what you shouldn't do. There's like, there's an old saying, like, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Um, there's more than one way some of these can go. So I might say this is what I think I would do, but you could do something different because we're different people and we live different lives. So um, there's no like one size fits all for some of these, but there are some like typical rules that maybe we should follow. You'll see what I mean. So let me go back because this is not the first one. Escape. All right, we'll go back to the beginning. Very good place to start. Yes, yes. Okay, here we go. Da -da. All righty, all righty, all righty. Now, now we're cooking with oil. Okay. So your friend's birthday is coming up and you really want to get them a gift. Unfortunately, you're completely broke. What do you do? This is one of those that's pretty open-ended. So I'll give you guys about 20 seconds after I ask a question to put thoughts in the chat. I don't care about spelling. I don't care if it's a complete sentence. This is not spelling class, okay? So do not panic about what you write. I'm just curious to know what you would think if there's something, because you guys might have really good ideas. And this one, like I said, there's a lot of different ways you can go with this. Maybe 10 more seconds if you want to type just a quick little something in the chat. Let's see what we've got. Um, make them one. Yes. Yeah. So while other answers come in, I would say absolutely yes. And this does not just go for you being in school. Yes, when you're in school, you tend not to have a lot of money. Okay. Um, maybe you do. Good for you. I did not. When I was a student in high school and college, I did not have a lot of money. I didn't have two nickels to rub together. Okay. So I would, I know one time I painted my friend a picture just did like a watercolor painting and she really liked it because she loved elephants, spend time, love is just as important as an item. So yeah, I say, you know, I, sorry, I can't get you a gift, but I would love to uh, have you over at my house, you know, and then they can come hang out or let's go to wherever, but you can also make them one. You can make them a bracelet. You could make them a painting, write them a letter, just telling how, how much you appreciate them as a friend. It's the thought that counts y'all. And if somebody gets really bad on a shape that they didn't get like a material present, then that's on them. They have to work that out. But there are ways around this. I've had friends who have been going through kind of a difficult financial time and they've like given me homemade soap that they made. And it costs very little to make soap or they've given me like a how to bake cookies, but it's like a mason jar, like a big glass jar, and it's got all the ingredients for making cookies. And they do that because it's pretty inexpensive, especially around the holidays, to get those ingredients and like make a bunch of these little jars and you can then hand them out. And it doesn't cost as much as buying like a specific gift. But again, you could just write them a note at the very least or um, paint them a picture or make them a bracelet, something very, very cheap. But yes, I love that. Make them one or spend time with them. Say, hey, let's go chat. Let's go hang out. I'd love to have you at my house, you know, blah, blah, blah. So this is a good one. You guys, you guys are doing well, doing well so far. When is it okay to call an adult by their first name? So another one where you might have to like give me examples. Again, I'm gonna give you 20 seconds. So while I'm talking, feel free to go ahead and type. When is it okay to call an adult by their first name? Obviously there are instances where you're not supposed to, like typically at school, you're going to be calling your teachers by their last name. Um, but when is it okay to call them by their first name? Don't normally let's tell you that. Hmm, absolutely. I would say go on what they introduce themselves to you as. Um, when they're family, so your family, yes. Unless your family is more strict about like, you need to be saying aunt so-and-so or uncle so-and-so. Um, in my family, growing up, uh, my dad's side, it was more, more uh, formal. So he would say uncle Mark, uncle John. Um, but then on my mom's side, it was more casual, you know, Steve Mel. So we would just call them by their first name. So I think it's just like what the, what the standard, like accepted rule is for that situation, whatever it is, but go with what they introduce themselves as. I know at the clubhouse, it's really weird. I, you know, I tend to introduce myself as Ellen and some kids are more comfortable calling me Miss Ellen um because they feel weird calling me by my first name although I tend to introduce myself just by my first name I certainly don't want anybody calling me Mrs. Ward that's so weird to me 
Um, but I think just go off what they introduce themselves as to you because that's their expectation. Um, and then I know it's really strange, but like if you have a teacher and you call them like Mr. Jones, but then you know them a lot later, it's so weird. My mom is a teacher or she was, she's retired now, but she taught with a bunch of my teachers. She taught at the elementary school that I went to. And so a lot of her friends that she goes every Thursday and plays cards with are my old teachers. And so she'll say, oh, I'm going to Ginger's house this week. And I'm like, you mean Miss Van Horn? Because I didn't know her as Ginger. And I don't think I could ever call her Ginger because she was my second grade teacher. And I'm going to forever call her Miss Van Horn. You know, um, I'm sure she would be fine with me calling her her first name now, but I, I can't do it. So there are some times when they might be OK with you calling them their first name and you aren't. <laughs> so it's just something to know. But yes, I think that's true. Whatever their expectation is, you should do. Um, all right, you're in class and you're really sleepy. What are some things you can do to keep from nodding off? This does not just apply to class. As an adult, there are instances where I'm at a conference or I'm in a webinar and I do not need to go to sleep, but I feel very sleepy. So mm, what are some things you can do? Go ahead and type in the chat. Of course, whenever the question, whenever I read the question, I start kind of going off on my little spiel, like y'all feel free to answer. What are some things that you can do to keep this? Just share us your tips, people. We need to know. We need to know. Share us your tips. What are some things you can do to keep from nodding off? All right. So um, let's say you're in class and some classes, I know it's fine to go to sleep. But let's say this is one of those. We get yes, stretch, get the blood flowing, stretch it out. Ooh wee! If you're able to get up and walk around, go sharpen your pencil, go throw something away in the trash can, get a tissue for no reason, pretend to blow your nose. It'll be a fun game for yourself. Go to the bathroom if you can. I know for some folks they're very strict about how often you can go to the bathroom. Keep a fidget toy in your hand. Keep your mind active. I have done things before where it's like, okay, I'm about to fall asleep, so. I can either fall asleep or I can doodle on my notebook. You know, and I'm like, what's worse? Me not paying attention, but being awake or me being asleep. And I'm like, eh, it's probably worse if I go to sleep. So I'll go over here and just do something else. So I'll distract myself is what I'm trying to say um, by doing something to keep myself awake. But let me shift gears and say, this is a little bit different, but once you guys start driving, if you're ever in a situation, this is my own fidget toy right here. I got my little, poop. ignore that. Um, if you're ever driving and you start to fall asleep or you start to feel yourself kind of nodding off or very sleepy while you're driving, here's what you need to do. Okay. Go to a gas station, buy yourself any caffeinated, anything could be a Red Bull, could be a coffee, could be a Coke, drink it and then take a 30 minute nap in the car. By the time that your 30 minute nap is over, the caffeine will have entered your body and start to wake you up again. So just a little tidbit, do not drive when you're about to fall asleep. That's dangerous. So that's just a little helpful hint for you once you start driving and getting sleepy. Um, if you have someone like, let's say you're doing like a long road trip, like me and my husband, if I'm driving, I start to feel sleepy. I'm like, I got to swap we can't do this. I don't try to be a martyr. I don't try to power through it. Just do the thing. But yes, stretching is great. Having a fidget toy handy or just doodle, do something to keep your mind occupied because there are places where falling asleep is probably okay. And then there are places where it's not. So I, I know in college, the professor is kind of like their own little, you know, it's their own little kingdom in their class. So some professors won't care. You can miss their class every day. You can just check out, be on your phone. Other professors are like, shut your laptop, sit up front. Don't talk to other people. Like they determine the atmosphere of the class. So, and that's probably true in your classes as well. Some, some teachers are pretty lazy about it. Not lazy in a bad way, but like, ah, eh, you know, do whatever you want. Easy going is a better word. They're more easy going. And then other teachers are probably more strict. So there will be times you don't need to fall asleep. All right, your roommate, let's say you've got a roommate. They wanna make you a nice dinner and you take a bit and you realize that it tastes awful. What do you do? We talked about this a little bit with the etiquette one back in the day, but let's say this is someone you really care about. You like this person. What do you do? See, see how all of these just kind of go all over the place. Like they're everywhere. You would be so surprised 
the amount of people that have come into the clubhouse and do not have the skill. We will spend time pre-pandemic. We would spend time like hand making a bunch of snack for kids, not just setting out granola bars, like going through, like making little sandwiches, making little whatever. Sometimes we would cook soup or chili or whatever. And some kids would walk up in there take one bite and say, this is nasty. Let me also say it was not nasty. It was good. They just didn't like it personally. They don't like, they don't like whatever food, but then they took, tried it anyway and didn't like it. Surprise. You don't like that food. And then you tried it. I appreciate you trying it, but then you declared that it was nasty. Not okay. Let's see what's in the chat. Um, tell them from, th thank you so much, but it's just not your cup of tea. So yeah, I would do exactly that. You could push through at least a decent amount. And so they appreciate you trying for them. Yes. So I would say um, trying some of it, unless it's just absolutely repulsive. And then you can always be like, oh, I'm just not that hungry. Thank you so much. It's, you know, or just saying, you know, I don't care for it actually. You know, this is not really my favorite, but I can tell you put a lot of effort into it. I so appreciate it. Um, when I went to, I went to a, like a cotillion is what they call it, where they learn manners and you learn various like old school dances or whatever. Um, it was fun. It was weird, but they were always like, if you don't like the food that you're served, you need to take a couple bites and then cut it into bits, like mess it all up and make it look like it's been, you know, moved around a lot. And then it won't look like you haven't eaten very much. So let's say it's a piece of chicken. You would just cut the chicken into little tiny bites. And then people won't be able to tell there's only a little bit missing because it's going to be all kind of everywhere. So just a little trick for you too. But yes, I love y'all's answers. They're both fabulous. Exactly what you're supposed to do. Okay. You receive a wedding. In let's try that again. You receive a wedding invitation in the mail. You notice the date and you realize that you are not able to go. What do you do? What is the typical protocol here? Let me tell you the option of just not showing up. Mm, don't do that. What's the typical thing that you're supposed to do? You get a wedding invitation and you can't go. There is like a process here. Respond and let them know you can't attend. Absolutely. So what comes and thank them. What comes with your invitation will normally be, be an RSVP card. Uh, something like, I'm sorry, I unfortunately can't attend. Absolutely. So usually there's a card that comes with it. It's a, like a response RSVP card and they make it very easy for you. When you get married, you have to like, I got married. Okay. Like 2012. And we had all these RSVP cards inside the invitation where people could see the invitation and then take out a little letter inside the big invitation that's like, yes, I can come. And this is how many people are coming and, or no, I can't come. You know, I regret that I won't be able to come. And so you can just, you know, people could take that out, check one or the other, put it in a pre-stamped envelope that was also in there and then mail it. So, and that is a lot because then you're stuffing the little RSVP card with the envelope and you're stuffing the invitation and all of that inside a bigger envelope. Oh my gosh. And it's a lot. Now, why would it be important to let somebody know you can't come to their wedding? Tell me in the chat. Why do you think that would be important? And yes, I love these responses saying something like, I'm sorry, I can't, you know, I'm un unfortunately I'm able to attend. That's a beautiful thing that you can say, responding, letting them know, thanking them for inviting you. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You might know why it would be important to let them know if you can come or not. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll give it like 10 more seconds and then we'll move along. You guys have got this pretty good though. I haven't stumped you yet. I'm hopefully going to stump you. So the reason why you might want to let somebody know that you can't come is because putting on a wedding or a reception specifically is very expensive. And a lot of the places that you go to have your wedding want a number of guests because they're going to be providing the food. So let's say you're getting married. You're going to get married at the, you know, this beautiful vineyard here in Dahlonega in a barn and the vineyard is going to provide the food. Okay. And they say it's $20 per person how many people are you going to have? You have to let us know two weeks before your wedding exactly how many people are going to come. 
okay, well, that's very hard. And that's where those cards come in. Cause then you know, well, I've had 50 people say yes. And I've had 70 people say no, which is actually pretty, pretty correct. Is it? Well, no, it's actually a little less to say no, but anyway, um, that way you don't go, well, I've only gotten 10 cards back. I have no idea how many people are coming in that case. You're probably going to make a guess way bigger than what you actually need because it's, you don't want to run out of food. So you're gonna say, well, I guess I'll have a hundred people there, but then what happens if only 60 people show up? You have a bunch of wasted food that you've already paid for. So it helps them out. Um, I will say this too. Let's, I, I actually had to do this recently. I had a wedding that I had to go to and it was a close friend, a very close friend. The RSVP card was not going to cut it. I actually called her myself and like told her over the phone that I wasn't gonna be able to go to her wedding. Um, and so that might be something you need to do. If you're very close to the person, you might need to reach out in a more meaningful way than just the card and saying, sorry, can't go being like, you know, and I told her basically the same things you guys said. I'm so sorry. I'm not able to go to your wedding, blah, blah, blah. So all of that to say, yes, you did well. When should a hug be used as a greeting? When do you hug adults? This is one of those that there's not a hard and fast rule. So maybe I just want to hear your personal thoughts on this. When should a hug be used as a greeting for anybody? And when do you hug adults? Okay, when you know the person well enough, yes. So if you have a very close relationship with the adult, if they're family, if that's something you guys have done and have typically done for a very long time. Um, also, I think for some folks, for some folks, like I will front hug if I know you really well, I'll be like, oh my gosh, yes. Some people, friends, acquaintances, I might side hug. And other people, I'm gonna be like, hey, what's up? High five close family, friends, um, if you're comfy with that kind of contact too. So other people are like, I don't want to be hugged. So thankfully that's one, um, there needs to be mutual consent. Absolutely. Um, I, you know, pandemic has kind of helped with that a little bit because I will have folks come up, um, and be like, Hey, and I'll just be like, Hey, and I'll stick my elbow out. And I'm like, give me an elbow bump. Um, also because it provides a barrier between me and the other person. So it's like, what's up and it you know communicates what kind of um contact i'm i'm you know accepting it also provides a little space between me and that person because there's some folks who are not huggers they're like i don't want to hug even if we've known each other from day one i don't want to hug um and that is 100 fine but if somebody hugs or tries to go in for hubby like hey what's up or hey fist bump um and you can kind of put a little space between you and that person um but if you also aren't comfortable hugging, be like, oh, I'm not hugging today or I'm not hugging right now. And that's another thing that's kind of happened since the pandemic is that people, and you don't have to explain yourself either. You'd be like, oh, I'm not hugging today or I'm not much of a hugger, you know, whatever. And you should be able to do that. And someone should respect that. And if they don't, that's a problem. Most folks are going to hear that and be like, oh, my bad. Cool, cool, cool. Good to see you. All right. Ooh, interesting. Okay. You're going to a wedding. It's in the evening at a local venue. The invitation says cocktail attire. What do you wear? The invitation says cocktail attire. Now, there's not a set aside thing. It might be a better question for me to ask you to answer. What should you not wear to this event? Maybe that's better to ask. What should you not wear to this event? going to a wedding. You guys, weddings are going to happen in your life. You're going to go to them, whether you decide to get married or not. That's just a thing that people go to. I think weddings are really fun. I like to go to weddings. Um, but there are like these unspoken rules about what people should wear, what you should do if you get an invitation, what kind of gift you should give. So cocktail attire. All right. All right, long dress down to your ankles, nothing white. Yes, yeah, so you don't wanna wear white because only the bride wears white. White is off limits. Um, you also don't wanna try to overdress and upstage the bride. So don't come in like you come in on a red carpet, okay? Your job is not to steal the show. You can look nice and put together, but don't like wear anything ridiculous. Like don't wear a giant hat on your head with all the glitter and the whatever. Like just keep it tasteful. Tasteful is good. Cocktail attire would be like 
Um, you could probably wear a, like a knee length dress, but it have to be really, really nice. No ripped jeans, no sweatshirts, absolutely not. No flip flops, no t-shirts, none of that. You need to wear something nice. If you're not a dress person, dress pants, romper to the floor. Um, you would not, especially since it's in the evening, because the time of day matters. If someone were to say like cocktail attire and it was in the afternoon and it was an outside wedding, I would say you could do a knee length dress. That's just me though. But for this event, for me, I'd probably wear a long dress. It could be like a more casual, like maxi dress, or you could wear something. They would say formal attire if they wanted you to wear like a ball gown. Um, rare do people put on that kind of wedding though. Most of the time it's going to be like, I'm having my wedding outside in, you know, at four o'clock and we're going to eat dinner in the barn after. Okay. Then a uh, knee length dress is fine. Um, or again, but you're probably not going to see jeans at those, unless they said casual attire, then you could wear something more casual, even casual attire at a wedding. I would probably do dark jeans, like a nice shirt, just cause I would be so wigged out to wear something like a sweatshirt there. Um, the little maxim I like to do is like, it's always better to overdress than underdress. So just kind of keep that in mind. It's always served me well. You will not really regret overdressing. You will regret underdressing. Two of your friends are mad at each other and they've both come to you for advice. How do you handle it? This one's tricky. This one's tricky. And, and it happens a lot, unfortunately. You find yourself in the middle of things. I'll give you guys a couple of seconds. If you have any tips, if it's happened to you before, please feel free to drop that in. Um, but what should you do in this kind of situation? What's worked for you in the past? Listen to both sides. Try to remain impartial. So yes. Yeah, so listen to both sides. Try not to take a side. You could even say like, I'm staying out of this, but I'll hear what you have to say. I'm not picking sides, but I'll hear what you have to say. The person may not like to hear that. They have all they might want is for somebody to get mad with them. But I would say it's okay to be like, you know what? I'm not really gonna pick a side, but I'll hear what you have to say. Non-biased opinion, general advice as if you were perfect. I love that to say, you know, I'm not really picking a side, but if I were you, I would do this. I'd also encourage them to try to get together and be like, you know what? I really think you guys need to talk to each other. Like, I think you guys should get together. I'm happy to sit there if you want, but like, I really think you should tell them this. I think you should tell them directly. Um, if you need to vent, that's okay, but I'm not gonna pick a side and I really think you guys need to sort this out together. It's not gonna get better until you do. So yeah, absolutely. And then just remaining impartial. You start trying to pick sides or you start trying to play around, like I'm gonna pretend like I'm on your side, but then you're gonna come to me and pretend like I'm on your side. That works until it doesn't. And then when they find out that you've been like talking out of both sides of your mouth, then they're like, oh, well, I don't want to be friends with you anymore. So to preserve integrity and friendships, you should probably just be like, you know what? I don't really want to get into it. I think you should talk to her. I think you or him, whoever. Um, but I'll let you know what I think for my opinion, you should do blah, blah, blah. I've had to do this because my best friend and my husband are coworkers. I love them both so much. Rarely do they ever get in a little issue, but sometimes it happens. And I am like, guess what? I'm not in the middle of your thing. I don't work for y'all. I'm over here. I love you, husband. I love you, best friend. Y'all need to figure it out. Uh, and I'll hear, and I try to listen like a judge would. Like, let me just hear the facts. Let me see what you've got. Okay, I really think that this was not okay. Maybe that was not okay, but y'all need to tell each other that. And I'm not picking sides. So I'm in this situation, not a lot, but I have been with two very important people in my life. All right, here we go. You're going to, we're going to lots of weddings today. <laughs> I didn't realize how many of these were wedding related. You're going to a wedding, it's outdoors in the afternoon and the invitation says nothing about the dress code. What do you wear? We just talked about this. So tell me what, what, what is expected to be worn? And again, if you're not a dress person, it's fine. Just think about what a person might receive um, and what they might, need to wear outside in the afternoon. The invitation says nothing about a dress code. What should you wear? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 10 more seconds, then we're gonna move on. Kneeling dress, nothing too casual, but nice, no flip flops. Correct, sandals, fine. Sandals, good. 
absolutely. Knee length dress, yes. Now you have to also pay attention to the weather. If it's gonna be cold, bring a sweater, bring a scarf, wear a long sleeve dress, doesn't matter. Wear a jacket on top, absolutely. Absolutely, casual dresses, knee length. Don't show up in a ball gown, do not. First of all, if it's outside, it's gonna ruin your dress. Second of all, not necessary. A gentleman in this situation would wear maybe khakis and a dress shirt. If it's hot, maybe a short sleeve dress shirt or a long sleeve dress shirt. Um, if it was a nice wedding, he would need to wear a suit. So not khaki pants, he would need to wear dress pants and a dress jacket, which he could then remove for the reception, but you're supposed to wear your coat during the wedding itself. And if you go to a funeral and you are a man, you need to wear a suit the entire time. They get very hot. I'm glad I don't wear suits. I'm not, I'm not in the business of wearing a suit. It's not for me. All right. Did you just draw my screen? <laughs> Let me just disable that. Thanks. Hey, what's up? Pause one moment. Um, never mind. I'm not gonna deal with that right now, but let's not annotate, please. And thank you. Okay. Um, oh man, what happened to this? Ooh. Okay. It's your birthday party and your opening gifts. You open a particular gift and it's a really terrible gift. How many of people has this happened to? Me. Or you've already got the exact thing. What do you say and what do you do with it afterwards? All right. So just envision whatever gift, like they just, I mean, this person really just got you something bad. <laughs> you do not like it. You're like, oh, have y'all seen that vine? An avocado. Thanks. That's all I can think about. What do you do? Say thank you and then return it later if you can or if you must. Absolutely. Absolutely. Say thanks so much and then just set it to the side. You won't have to say anymore. Oh, thanks. So and so happens a lot with, with wedding gifts. Oh my gosh. You get the same thing over and over because people do not check your registry or they'll get you something dumb. I've had people get me stuff that's monogrammed that have my wrong initials on it. And I'm not going to call them out right there and be like, uh, this is not correct. I'm never wearing this because it's my wrong initials. Instead of like, Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Especially since it's a monogram. They can't fix it. So I'm not going to embarrass them at kind say thank you. And then you can personalize the item if possible yeah you can fix it you could see if you can give it away um i mean you know i have clothes that people have given me that just aren't my style you know or they don't fit and so i'll keep them for a little while just kind of be like i'm not ready to get rid of this just yet i'm going to honor the gift and then i'll donate it um yes 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 that will happen don't be rude it oh gosh have you ever been to a party or been around a kid who gets a gift and they're so ungrateful. They're like, I didn't want this. Or why did I get clothes? I have I've seen people before. I kid you not. Someone who will receive a birthday card, open immediately, take the money out, and then just toss the card to the side. I know that the best part of getting cards is to get the money inside. Okay. I admit, yes. But at least read the card. At least read the card. Okay. It's, Oh, thank you. Usually when you get a card, you open it, set the money to the side, look at the card. Thank you, so-and-so. And thank you for this. Fold the card up, put it away. It is so rude. And I saw somebody do it where they literally open the card, dump the money out and just put the card to the side. I'm like, rude, rude. That person probably spent some time picking that card out for you. Maybe what they're saying it is meaningful. Maybe they wrote a personalized note in there. Do not be rude. Read the card. Look at the money later. Just, eh. So anyway, but yes, just another thought. Okay, what do you say when you lose a game? What do you say? What do you do? You lose a game. Maybe it's like something real competitive. Y'all, I've seen this at the clubhouse a hundred times. A hundred times we'll play games. Good game. Yes. Good game. Thanks for playing with me. Let's do it again sometime. Easy peasy. Even if you're upset, be decent. Be decent. OK, I'm working on this with my four year old right now because he gets really bent out of shape when he loses stuff. And we're like, guess what? You don't you don't win everything. Nobody bats a thousand. OK, like you're not going to win all of them. It's not possible. And it's OK. I want him to know 
I think two opponents. Good job. Hope we can play again soon. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, let's do it again sometime. You really got me that time, man. That was great. This and this. And if they are going to gloat and be full of themselves, that's on them. But you get to be the bigger person by saying, good game. Thanks for playing with me. And then walk away if you don't want to spend time with them. But otherwise it's just a game. It's just a game. Games are meant for fun. I've seen kids at the clubhouse when we've played a game, we play a lot of games at the clubhouse, a lot of games. There's some people who will get so riled up. And then at the end, when they lose, they will picture it. I've seen people cry before. Y'all, we're playing games like capture the flag. This is not like we're playing the Olympics here. Like, and nobody's winning anything. Like, it's just a game. But people have lost their minds. I've had people say, like, I'm never coming back here again. I can't believe this. And I've had to talk them down and be like, what is going on? And then they're like, I just did it. And it's like, okay. Or I've had people say immediately, you cheated. That's the only way you won because you cheated. You're a cheater. I'm like, no, you just lost. And it's okay. It's okay to lose. Nobody wins everything all the time. All right. My husband is a huge Atlanta Falcons fan. He loves Atlanta Falcons football. Okay. Loves it. They have been terrible for years. They went to the Super Bowl, blew it, by the way. It was an embarrassing game. They were winning and then they lost. It was terrible. And basically ever since then, they've been garbage. Um, but he loves them. And so that doesn't mean that he's, he's not accusing every single team of cheating. The Falcons are just having a hard time. <laughs> so it's okay. Uh, you just got to deal with it. That's part of being a good sport. It's being like, you know what? It's just not our season again. And it's okay. It'll be our season sometime. Um, I saw this the other day. Like I love baseball. That's, that's actually our family. You know, we watch a lot of baseball. Freddie Freeman is one of the best players that have been on the Atlanta Braves ever. If you don't know Freddie Freeman, he just, he is our best player, period. He can hit the ball. Um, and they will do like scores of how well baseball players hit. And so think about like a thousand is like almost like a hundred percent, just knock a zero off. And it's like a hundred percent. He has like a 300 batting record right now which means he hits the ball 30 percent of the time that's really really good that's really really good that also means that 70 percent of the time he doesn't hit he misses he strikes out so even the best fail 70 percent of the time and it's okay it's okay so we just gotta know this y'all it's all right you're not gonna win all of them you're not supposed to you're not supposed to i'm not gonna make my son win everything does that set him up well for life? Does that set him up to be a good adult? No. If you win everything, you're not going to, like, you get out in the real world, you will lose some things. You will fail. And if I don't teach him how to fail correctly, properly, with grace, then he will get out there. And what will he do? Flounder. So, sorry, got on a diatribe. All right. Whoa. All right. You're in the armed forces and someone says, thank you for your service. What does that mean? And what do you say in return? I actually don't know what you say in return. If they say anything, I think some of them just nod. But what does that mean to say to someone, thank you for your service? Do you have to say it to somebody in the military? No, you don't have to. Thank you for your support. Is, or thank you for your support. What'd you say back? Okay, good. I didn't know that one. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Okay, that's perfect. Um, basically what you're saying is I appreciate what you're doing for the country. I am not saying you have to say this. This is just, you'll hear people say this from time to time. Thank you for your service. Thank you for serving the country is what that means. All right, your best fried. I should say friend. Of course, I'm happy to protect the country. Okay. Um, your best friend wins an award that you are also up for. You, all, you, you can't help but feel a little bit jealous. What do you do? What do you do? This one's hard. This will also happen, y'all. There are going to be things that you want badly that someone else is going to get and you're not going to, or you won't get it the same time or the same way or at all. Congratulate them. Okay, yeah, congratulations. This, does this mean we have to ignore what we're feeling? No, no. I learned a really, they earned it. Okay, great. I heard a really good phrase the other day that um, has helped me recently. And it is, uh, and it's for me, it's for what you would say to yourself. This is not something you would say to somebody else. What you would say to them is congrats, congratulations, good job. That was awesome. And then walk away. And then you can sit with your feelings by saying, I'm happy for them. I'm sad for me. That's okay. Because then you can be like, I'm happy for you, but I'm sad for me. 
and that's all right. You can have both. Okay. You can feel happy for your friend and sad for yourself. Congratulating them doesn't mean you're ignoring what you're feeling. You can have both. So happy for them, but sad for me. And you can sit with that and that's okay. You can also be congratulatory and, and, uh, you know, respectful. All right. You sat in something that was a weird stain on the back of your pants. What do you do? This happens to me more frequently than I would like. There's some sort of weird stain on my clothes somewhere. I have two, two small children, so stains happen. Stains happen. What do you do? Back of your pants, weird stain. And there's more than one thing you could do here. So just what are your tips? What would you do in this situation? Okay, so if you have some sort of jacket or something, you can always tie it around your waist. Um, all right, let's see what we got here. Jacket around your hips. Yes, jacket. So you're able to change. Absolutely. I love it. Um, let me also say that just get, if you're like at school, get some hot water and a paper towel and see if you can get the stain out, whatever it is. Um, if you are near like dish soap, like the blue liquid Dawn soap, a drop with like a cloth or something will help get it out too. Um, you could also just own it. That's the other thing is if it, just walk around, do your life. And if people see it, be like, Hey, you got a huge day. Be like, yep, I know it. Yep. Got it. Roger that. Yep. <laughs> Forgot to pack my extra pants today. <laughs> Lean into it. Just own it. Okay. Um, but if you have clothes, you can change into feel free, go for it. If you're able to wear a jacket around it. Um, and then try to get it off in the bathroom. And if you can't, just own it. Yep, got some stuff on my pants today. That kind of day, huh? <laughs> yeah, just lean in. I do that a lot. Like, that's kind of how I pull the rug out from people who will try to say things that might seem a little condescending or a little mean. I'll tend to like lean into it, steer into the skid. They'll be like, you guys are in your pants. I'm like, yeah, I do. That kind of day, am I right? Hope it's not poop. Like, I mean, I usually, I honestly will just throw that out there. And then they're like, ha, and I kind of, you know, take control back of the situation. Just my own personal thing. All right, we'll do like two more of these. And I know we're coming up on time. So y'all will be free to have the rest of your evening. You were at a restaurant with a friend and their family and they offer to pay for your meal. What do you do? This is going to happen to you 7,000 times in your life. Okay. So it doesn't have to be a friend and a family. It's just like, you're going to be in a situation where you go and you are hosted by some, somebody and your meal gets paid for. They offered to pay for your meal. What do you do? Gimme, gimme, gimme. I want to hear this one. I got lots of thoughts on this one because I have seen things go wrong with this. I have opinions on this one. Okay. Except if you want to say, thank you, offer to pay for the next one. If you can't, absolutely. Yes. Um, I tend not to just say, okay, like that's not my, if they're, uh, let's, let's say it's, um, my in-laws when they take us to dinner. Um, okay. So deny, but if they insist, you may accept or may have. Okay. Yeah. So there, again, there's lots of different ways that this can go. So my in-laws will offer to pay and we'll be like, oh no, 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 we've got it. And they'll be like, no, no, please. We insist like you guys, this and this and be like, oh, well, thank you so much. I tend to like my own personal rule is to like, deny once oh no 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 well, we, we we're that's not necessary we're fine and if they're like no no I'm like, oh well thank you so much I appreciate it you know uh let us get you next time you don't have to do it that way it's just like my personal formula you could also just go straight to thank yous you're like no we've got it this time we're gonna we're gonna take care of your suit oh my gosh thank you so much you didn't have to do that I appreciate it you could go into that automatically too here's what you don't do don't just sit there don't just sit there thank them. I tell you, it's a peeve of mine. Somebody, nothing comes for free. If somebody bought something for you as an act of generosity, you thank them for it. It is not that hard. Thank you. It can come out of your mouth. It's fine. You don't have to, like, it's not going to hurt you to say thank you to somebody. Okay. Thank them. That even if it's my in-laws, I will thank them every time they pay for my food. And then at the end of the full weekend that they come to stay with us, I will thank them again. Because it's just like, you never can do it too much. Honestly, you can do it too little. 
So, all right, wasn't appropriate. We already talked about that. It's too many outfits. I'm gonna skip. Um, okay, you're invited to a potluck dinner. What does that mean? And what do you bring? This may or may not be our last one, depends. You're invited to a potluck dinner. What does that mean? And what do you bring? What is a potluck? That sounds like a pot of gold. Give you all about 10 more seconds. All right, let's see what we got. A homemade meal, a casserole or something. So a potluck is everybody brings something. That's the kind of meal it is. Like we're having a potluck. I've been to a potluck wedding before where somebody says potluck wedding, just bring, bring a side dish. We'll do the meat. Everybody else bring a side dish. Okay. So basically a potluck is bring something that you cook from your house and something that you think would be yummy to share. So I, and I usually have like a couple that I keep in the back of my head that I kind of will like, okay, this is my go-to. One of my go-tos is stuffed mushrooms because it's different and people like it. Um, this is where you'll go to see a bunch of casseroles, these like grannies will make, which is delicious. Um, people will bring rolls. Some people will bring dessert, but like you just, you bring something, bring something and you can bring something you like, especially if it's a big thing. Like, okay, well, I really like mashed potatoes. So I'm going to make mashed potatoes. Um, but then, you know, there's enough for people to pick from. So that's a pile. Let's do one more, one more. When should you ask how much, ugh, when should you ask how much a gift costs? Somebody gives you a gift. When should you ask how much it costs? Woo, answers coming in quick. Never. Pretty sure it's never. Like, it would be a rare instance where you would need to know that information. Rare instance. Also, when you're giving a gift, do take, yeah, never, ever. Um, do take the price tag off before you give a gift. It's just like customary. If you're going to give a gift, take the price tag off. Don't let people know how much you spent for it. Um, and then you don't need to ask like, whoa, this nice. How much you paid for this? Like, no, just say it's nice. Just say it's nice. You don't need to know how much it was. I will say sometimes you'll get a receipt in case they want you to return it. And then you might be able to see how much was on there. Yeah, just be grateful. Exactly. Um, so if you see how much there is, it, my grandma is really bad about leaving price tags on. And then I'm like, yikes. Um, but I'll try to just be like, oh no, oh, you know, just try not to pay attention to how much it was. So um, it's just, you don't need to know how much something costs. A lot of stuff with money is kind of taboo. Like we tend not to ask people, you don't ask people how much they make. Like how much do you get paid? Like that's not a thing you ask. How much was your car? If they volunteer that information, that's one thing, but you don't ask people that stuff. So um, I think as many as we're going to go through, uh, I hope that was informative next week. I think we're going to do either social media, fake news, like how to spot fake news, or we're going to do um, how to take care of your, like when your home stuff starts to break, like home maintenance. These are the ones that are coming up here soon. So I'm excited. I like adulting 101. It's a fun conversation. If there's ever anything you guys want to talk about more, I am happy to create a little uh, presentation for us to talk more about. So I will stop the recording.